Hi, Mark here from Expert Adventure. Um, this video is about packing for or what kit to bring on a UK challenge event. Um, so the, the kind of events that we're talking about are things like the Yorks Three Peaks, uh, Welsh Three Thousands, Lakes Twenty Four, the sort of events that they're the sort of events that we run here at Expert Adventure. Um, it's also transferable to other events that you might do within the UK and elsewhere as well. And they're kind of the events that we're talking about are summer based, um, summer based events. So kind of the, you know, the shoulder seasons toward the end of the spring, the summer, and then into the autumn. And then when it gets to the end of, you know, the end of the autumn into the winter, we kind of change things up a little bit. Um, but the majority of our, our challenge events are run throughout the sort of summer months. So we're going to mention quite a few, um, quite a few different brands within the within this video and I will link them in the description uh, underneath but um, by no means does it mean you have to rush out and spend loads of money on all this fancy kit that we've got and um, really we're just looking for things that are similar or you'd be looking for things that are similar to to what we've got listed um, and you know from the advice that that's sort of given in this video and um, so Without further ado, we're going to dive straight into some of the kit. Um, on your event, you'll get given a kit list uh, for for the items to bring, um, and really, that is, you know, that's the kit that you need to bring. Shouldn't really be a, there. Shouldn't be any less than what's on the list, and there shouldn't really really be too much more than is on the list either. So light is right, um, and it's you know that's kind of a good adage to go by for packing for almost any. Uh, expedition course or, or event like this. So the first thing we're going to talk about is footwear. Now you might see on your chosen uh, challenge that people are wearing different different footwear. People might be wearing boots or people might be wearing running shoes or they might be wearing uh, a, something called an approach shoe um, as well. So Many of the people that we have working on the trips might be wearing running shoes and actually moving quite quickly between checkpoints or or such like um, and it's important to remember that those those people that you see wearing say you know fell running shoes on your event um, if they're a leader have many years of experience of moving around in the mountains with that sort of footwear on um, and you know and boots as well but they have uh, they have sort of the physical attributes that are built up over time to deal with the undulating terrain and also um, they understand how to move around in the mountains wearing the footwear that they're wearing so um, and that's really important when it comes to what you're putting on your feet so for the majority of people, boots would be the preference um, to give a little bit of ankle support so that if you're not too used to moving around in the mountains, um, then it gives you a little bit more stability uh, and less chance of, of becoming, um, becoming injured. So this is an example of a boot that I personally would wear um, on, a, on an event. I actually have pretty bad ankles, so I tend not to wear boots if I can if I can get away with it. Uh, so this is quite a low low cut boot. Um, good grip on the bottom of the boot is essential, and then yeah, and then the kind of upper of the boot. This particular one has Gore-Tex uh, a Gore-Tex liner in it, so it's a little bit waterproof. No boots fully waterproof because it's got a big hole in the top of it, um, but it gives you a little bit of waterproofness. On the upper and um, and and that can be great some people uh, some people find that their feet get really hot in the boot and um, but the kind of key point to, to a walking boot is to make sure that they are well worn in so you've been out on similar terrain in them um, and the, the you know that they've, they've worn into your feet so don't turn up to an event with a brand new pair of boots because it'll um, it, it, you know, it won't end well for you. Um, a, another couple of bits about about boots. You might want to uh, wear a gaiter, which goes around the top of the boot. Some people opt to do that. Personally, I don't. Sometimes I might wear a, 
a short gaiter in the winter over a low boot uh, just to keep the snow out but for most uh, most trips out into the mountains I tend not to wear a gaiter and the reason for that is that your feet get too hot um, and all of the equipment that we talk, we're talking about you know some of the equipment is to uh, to keep the water off so a waterproof but it also needs to breathe as well and if you're Kind of locking your foot into something that's not going to breathe particularly well then you're going to end up with sweaty feet and you know which can increase the chance of blisters and, and things like that so so yeah gaiters optional um but a boot with a good good tread on it um, and a, and a kind of you know good ankle support is a must and um, coupled with that we have socks and um, so it needs to be a pair of walking socks and I would go for some, you know, these are, what are these? Smart wool socks. Um, these are sort of mid-weight socks, so not super light. Super light would be like a running sock and not super heavy, like a big mountaineering sock, sock something in the middle um, that goes, you know, goes up above your ankle, not a little ankle sock. They're, they're kind of no good for moving around in the hills with. Um, and definitely not a you know a standard standard sock that you'd wear to work. They need it needs to be a decent pair of walking socks. Um, and again, wear them wear them with the boots that you're going to be using as well. So next up on our list, we've got trousers. Um, so not a pair of jeans, not a pair of jeans like this. They won't work if they get wet. Then that's kind of you know end of play really. Um, or cotton not good if they get wet so something which is synthetic and and wicks moisture away uh, i really like these these are like a really soft uh, really lightweight soft shell uh, pair of trousers and um, happen to be by arcteryx but there's plenty of other brands out there as well there's not much really to say about trousers but ones that are you know these are kind of splash proof really so if you've got a little bit of you know, if it got a little bit damp, it would kind of wick, it would, um, sorry, bead the, the water off a little bit, but they're not, you know, they're not kind of designed to be, to be worn in a big damp or, um, if it's a really hot day or it's supposed to, you know, it's forecast to be a hot day, then a pair of shorts would be great as well. But also you'd want to have a pair of shorts and then have these in your rucksack too so a pair of trousers as well even if you're wearing shorts most of the time just due to the weather changing and again shorts you know you can get fancy fabrics and um, i'd just wear a pair of running shorts you know some of those really lightweight material that dries very quickly um, and again make sure that your you know your trousers fit you well enough they're not too tight they're not too baggy that they just fit and you can move around uh, efficiently in them um, next thing on our list, we have a t-shirt. So this is again, a lightweight wicking t-shirt. So like a sports t-shirt, some might say, you know, loads of different brands make the, these sort of t-shirts. This is a um, Patagonia Capelin t-shirt. Really good, really lightweight. You know, you don't get super sweaty in this. And again, if it was a little bit of rain on this, it can dry pretty quickly. Um, you know that's kind of an essential piece of kit as well and um, not a cotton t-shirt cotton t-shirts won't dry quickly if they get wet uh, even if they get a little bit damp next up we have a mid layer so mid layer and um, you know will go on top of your t-shirt there um, and I tend to prefer a mid layer that is a little bit like this so this is actually one of my favorite pieces of clothing probably of all time this is a uh, patagonia r1 hoodie so it's a, a micro fleece so it has this kind of grid pattern in here it's not a super heavy fleece you know it goes quite small and um, but the reason that i like this a lot is that it has this hood on it which almost forms like a balaclava when you put this up and um, so you can be, you know, you can be nicely protected from the elements with this, with this fleece. And um, again, not too, not too thick. Um, and it'll, 
it actually dries fairly quickly as well this and wicks moisture away from the body really really efficiently the other thing to carry with you is a, a spare mid layer so you might be wearing that and then you know if it gets really cold or wet or if there's a problem then you might want to put another uh, warm jacket on as well and you could go for something that's basically the same as that or you could go for something that's similar to this so this is a um this is just a shelled you know shelled micro fleece basically it's kind of the same as this but with this little windproof shell on the top of it and um, and with a hood i really like things that have got a hood on uh, to give you that extra little bit of warmth and um, so yeah having something like that in in your rucksack is really handy um, next up we've got waterproofs now when it comes to waterproofs you can get you know you can spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds on waterproofs and um, and really there's no need unless you're doing something particularly exciting uh, that that warrants having a really really heavy waterproof on so the waterproofs that, that we kind of go for in the UK most of the time unless it's in the winter is uh, these ones which are marmot precip so waterproof trousers and a waterproof jacket and um, so this is these are the waterproof trousers and as you can see you know they pack up really small uh, so we want nice small lightweight but waterproof as well and um, you know that no waterproof is going to keep every single bit of bit of you dry if in a massive downpour um again a bit like a boot they've got holes in them so you're going to get wet a little bit with them on but but those pre ones are really really good um again a, a jacket with a hood is essential so a waterproof jacket with a hood you need to have a hood on it um, and you should be able to move around freely with with the waterproofs on as well and also the waterproof should go over all of the clothes that you're going to be wearing or you might might have to wear so they should go over your uh, your your mid layers um, as well as go over the trousers that you're wearing so next up we have headwear depending on the the weather um, would depend on what, what sort of headwear you you know you have on so if it's really sunny uh, a baseball hat is perfectly fine you could wear a wide brimmed hat as well doesn't really matter um, but something to keep the the sun off your face or turn it around the sun off your neck um, is essential and then coupled with that regardless of whether it's sunny or whether it's cold you should have both of, all of these things um, is just a warm hat so something like this this is a this happens to be a merino wool hat but just a just a hat to um you know to that can cover your ears as well so to keep that to keep you to keep your head warm um, and if you think this is like a really thin hat but i've also got this hood potentially on here which is fleece lined i've got a my mid layer hood which is like a balaclava and then i've got my waterproof jacket hood as well so it doesn't need to be a big you know really big hat it can be something quite small like this and um, this works you know really really well I'd avoid a hat with a big bobble on the top of it it might look kind of cool but they um, it can be difficult sometimes to get your hood particularly on a waterproof jacket properly cinched up around your head with a bobble on top and um, so yeah next thing up would be gloves so a pair of uh, pair of warm gloves and I kind of tend to like going for a pair like these and I use these for everything these are uh, I think they're called so uh, mid weight soft shell glove by Black Diamond uh, so they're a warm glove and then they kind of have this little bit of a waterproof covering on top of them so they keep a little bit of uh, a little bit of rain off but they're you know they're not 100% waterproof, of course, but they're you know they're more waterproof and they'll stay warmer than say like a really thin pair of fleece gloves. So these work really well. Um, yeah, so a pair of gloves. Next up, we've got a rucksack. So a rucksack for you know pretty much all of your events, uh, all the events that we run, should be between kind of 20 
uh, and 35 litres. And so here's an example of a rucksack. Uh, this is 28 litres and really nice and lightweight. Again, you can have rucksacks that uh, say that they're waterproof, all of that sort of stuff, but it's got a big hole in the top, so it isn't. Um, the best thing to do is to actually use little dry bags to keep things um, to keep things dry, so dry bags like this, to keep things dry within your bag, or one big dry bag to put things in. You can also use a, a really thick uh, rubbish bag as well. But yeah, a, a nice lightweight rucksack is, is what we're after. Um, I don't really like those rucksacks that have a really complicated back system on for carrying things because it makes the rucksack heavier. Uh, so this is dead simple uh, and I just pack it appropriately and also don't pack too much stuff in it so that it isn't super heavy and uncomfortable. Um, if you go for a rucksack that's, too, that's kind of much bigger than this then you tend to pack a lot more into it, extras. So. We want to go for one that's fairly small really uh so 28 you know this 28 liters is is kind of the probably the biggest size that i would take on a um on a challenge event i might even go for something a little bit smaller and and also with rucksacks i don't particularly like uh when they've got lots of different attachments and fan danglements on them they're just unnecessary and they add extra weight so something very simple um, and basic like this is is, is perfect uh, for 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 all all our our challenge events. The next thing we have on our on our list is trekking poles. So you can buy dead cheap trekking poles pretty much all over the place. You'll probably get one use out of them. And um, so an example of a you know, a fairly decent pole, which is one that we use for winter quite a lot, is, uh, you know, something like this, which is an MSR pole. Loads of different manufacturers make them. But if you're going to be doing a lot of events or using, you know, using poles to go out hill walking or for other things, then you want to invest in a pair that's that's decent. So these MSR ones are great. Um, these aren't particularly old. I've got some black diamond poles, which are fairly old and I've been out skiing and things with them broken them and then sawn part of the aluminium off and shortened it down so they you know they you can fix them dead easy whereas a really cheap pair you can't really do that and um, the other thing about poles is on the tip of the pole there you'll see that it's got this little i don't know if you can see this but there's got this little metal tip and um, and that metal tip stops it from sliding around on uh, on wet rock Sometimes you'll see people with those rubber ferrules, I think they're called, on the end of them, like the the tip. Um, you want to take them off. They're, they're useless, completely useless. You'll just slip all over the place with them. But uh, So having a metal tip exposed on a pole is, is essential if you're going to use them. Uh, they don't need to have these big baskets on there really for snow. Uh, but yeah, decent kind of, you know, decent set of poles if, if you're going to use them. It's really good. Uh, it takes a lot of weight off, uh, particularly on the downhills, takes a lot of weight off your knees uh, if you're using two of them. And, you know, and also if you, you know, if you were to maybe roll an ankle or if someone else was to do that, then, then you've got a pole that you can, you know, give to someone to help support them or support yourself, so on. So they're, they're really handy to have. Um, all our kind of leaders on, on trips will carry a pair of these whether they've got them in the hands or whether they're just attached to the rucksacks to give to people. But yeah, they'll all, all, all have a set of set of poles handy. Um, next up, we've got water carrying. So on all, all of our events that we run, they're in mountainous areas. So um, sometimes, like a Yorkshire Three Peaks event, there'll be... Uh, checkpoints at the road where we can refill water so um, you know that might be through the event organizer or, or one of us will have water that people can refill um, and sometimes on other events there might not be areas to um, to refill water like that so it might be a case of getting it off the hill and um, so first of all if we talk about carrying water most events I would say two liters of water is 
is kind of the maximum that you need. If you think that you're gonna you're gonna have to carry the water and you know a liter of water weighs a kilo, so you've got two extra kilos to carry, and you know if you keep adding to that, then it just adds up uh, adds up weight. Um, and for you know for a lot of things you can get away with not actually drinking loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of water all the time and, and just take some and then refill it. So a few different ways you can carry that. Uh, you can use a bladder, that's fine. I tend to prefer using bottles and I'll take something like this Nalgene, which is really good because it's very visual. I can see how much I've drunk and, and you know, dead easy to fill up if I need to, big wide opening on it. Also, these don't break. Uh, I've never managed to break a, a, a Nalgene bottle. There's other bottles that um, that you can get which look very similar, but but not as not as good. These are bomb proof. And then I also take uh, a little bladder like this. So this is by Hydropack. Uh, I think it's called like a Stow or something. Yeah, Stow one liter. So that's a one liter little flask. And um, and it's actually quite hard. You know, quite tough, thick uh, material. This so. It, so it's uh, unlikely that you kind of bust that but yeah that's that's nice really lightweight when it's not got any water in it um, and it kind of rolls up and it can you know it goes really really small and um, so you can just shove that in the top of your top of your pack if you not get anything in it um, so yeah that's they're, they're great but two liters capacity is kind of maximum really now if you're out on the top on the fell um, up in the hills and there's no nowhere to kind of resupply the water so there's no one waiting in a car with bottles of water then um, the the leader on in in your group will have some way of filtering water uh, for you and um, used to be you know when I was a kid growing up in the lakes would just drink from any beck any stream um, anywhere in the mountains it was absolutely fine but nowadays um, there's there's a lot more there's a lot lot more people traveling around the the mountains who don't necessarily know how to um, what's the right term how to kind of behave up in the hills so they might go to the toilet in the wrong place um, and so so the water can end up being um, pretty grim in a lot of places so I tend to these days carry a, a kind of filter bottle so this filter bottle the pretty cheap catadin and um, again it's this little soft flask so it goes dead small and inside here it's got a little uh, a little water filter so you can so we can I can sort of fill up water and um, pretty much wherever and use that to, to filter it and I use this a lot a lot at the moment and um, doing a lot of running I'll carry this with me and then I can just fill up water whenever you know whenever and where wherever I need to um, it's not necessary that you have one of these it's just you know because your your leader will have something similar some sort of filter system um, but just a handy thing to have uh, out in the hills next up we've got a first aid kit or what we refer to as an ouch pouch so the first aid kit is really for your own personal first aid it's not necessary for you to carry a big first aid kit to look after other people that's kind of what we what we do and um, so in your first aid kit so this is an example of kind of my small uh, personal first aid kit and um, so in your first aid kit things like plasters uh, blister plasters in particular a really handy um, you know tape for your feet um, maybe maybe a little bandage that sort of thing nothing major really in, in the first aid kit or you know ouch pouch is probably a better way to to call it because it's not for emergencies it's for just kind of personal uh personal maintenance really um so yeah first aid kit is something that you'll you'll need to have a little ouch pouch next up um we have a whistle so uh, many rucksacks have a whistle attached to them now so just check your rucksack out if it does if not then you'll need to bring a whistle along so um, you get these all over the place like 50 pence or something and um, and we'll discuss you know during your your briefing kind of what, what what you kind of need to do with with one of these but yeah a whistle's an essential bit of kit to have and um, handy to have it sort of somewhere accessible you know if you've 
you're wearing this sort of top, then you put it in your pocket or on your rucksack, in a little pocket on your rucksack, uh, not buried at the bottom of your rucksack, because if you need to use it, you want to get to it pretty quickly. So yeah, whistle, um, head torch, head torch and spare batteries. This is a piece of kit that it's advisable to spend a little bit more money on than, uh, than maybe some of the other other items. You know, a, a fleece is a fleece. Um, some are a little bit better than others, but, but that's kind of that. Um, whereas a head torch, it needs to be one that isn't going to break, um, that isn't going to be affected too much by uh, by water. It doesn't need to be super waterproof, but one that's not affected too much by water. So spend a little bit more money on getting a getting a head torch that's fairly decent. They last a long time. Um, often head torches have like a decent warranty on them. So if it was to, to break, then... Uh, you know, then you can kind of get it replaced or or, or fixed. Um, whereas a cheaper head torch, you know, it's it's almost almost maybe do maybe do one or two trips and then you've got to get rid of it and get another one. So getting a decent head torch is is a good idea. This is a silver one, which is which is pretty good. Um, you know, I there's head torches you can get which uh, have rechargeable uh, units on that you kind of plug in. I tend not to go for those just cause from being away on trips um, to remote places, you can always pretty much get batteries. So this particular one, you know, has got some uh, just triple A's in it, um, and then also spare spare batteries as well. If you put a f if you're going to be out at night, so and you know if it's kind of guaranteed that it's going to get dark, then and you're going to be using your head torch, then putting a fresh set of batteries in and then carrying a fresh set of batteries as well is a you know is a good idea. Um, so yeah, head torch and um, food. Now, this is sort of a small pack of food that I might take on a on a big, you know, on a kind of long trip, like a maybe twelve hour, fourteen hour day, or bigger. And um, I'm not going to talk about what's in here now. That's for a different video. Food, you know, nutrition for or food for a um, for a challenge event, but just to um just to kind of let you know on that on what that next video is going to be is that you know we want to have real food um plus some kind of energy gel style things uh, but what we don't want to do is rely solely upon uh those sort of energy gel things so yeah bag of food as well um you know in a in a bag like that or or however you want to carry it, it's fine and um, sunglasses so you know i'm pretty sensitive to to sunlight so i kind of wear sunglasses all the time but a pair of sunglasses is uh you know is is good to have um for for kind of uk challenge events you know it's i'm not going to say that it's essential it's essential to have sunglasses when you work when you're on snow but for these sort of events we're not going to be on snow so um you know not not super essential but i would say that the you know definitely have a pair with you they don't need to be these kind of big big deal expedition ones just a pair of sunglasses uh is is kind of you know handy to have um next up and kind of almost like the most important the most important bit really for for me is that with a lot of the challenge events that we run um, we run, we have kind of quite a lot of people traveling over um, a specific area at one time, or it might be that we say for, for instance, York Three Peaks, we might have several groups on one day or spread over, um, spread over, you know, spread over a few months, we might have lots of groups going on there. So our environmental impact on the ground itself, um, with erosion is quite high and then with a lot of providers if we you know if we kind of look at if we look at some of the other providers without naming any names and um, the other impact is litter uh, and waste and like I said just before about waste uh, in the mountains and how it affects the water and um, we want to try and you know we want to avoid that as much as possible and um, so during the briefing, there'll be a big talk about how to correctly, you know, go about your business if you have to in the mountains. I'm not going to talk about that here. Um, 
and also about litter. So to begin with, the kind of kit that, that we recommend you have some tissues, uh, some hand sanitizer, and then a couple of uh, sealable bags. Uh, so, you know, two or three sealable bags. One sealable bag is for tissue, uh, used toilet tissue, and then the other one is for rubbish. Um, now, anything that you take up on the mountain or up in the hills should come back down again, and that means anything at all. So, up in the up in the top of the hills, there aren't any. You know, there's no banana trees or apple trees growing up there. So, banana skins, apple cores, anything at all needs to come back down and go in the bin. So, a bag, you know, like this, or it could just be a, uh, an old shopping bag to put litter in, food wrappers, and food waste. Um, you need to bring one of these along uh, in order to do that. It's not acceptable to throw, um, you know, throw throw litter, but it's not acceptable to throw things that people might not consider litter, banana skins, apple uh, apple cores, orange peel, that sort of thing, anywhere, um, anywhere, particularly up in the up in the uh, in the mountains. It's a very delicate upland environment. We want to try and keep it that way as much as possible um, and yeah if you need to go to the loo and again we'll talk about how you do that during briefings and um, but tissue so toilet use toilet tissue needs to be packed away in a sealable bag you double bag it whatever uh, taken off the hill and then thrown away yeah we don't leave leave that sort of stuff up in the mountains Okay, so let's get everything packed up in our bag. So we're going to use some dry bags and I like to start with a big one and put in my extra layer in there. And my waterproofs. And I stick that down the bottom. And then my first aid kit, put down that, that down the bottom as well. Same with my gloves and my hat. So a little dry bag. Stick those in there. And pop that in, shove them all the way down. A bit of food, and we'll put our water in. Like so, and then I'm going to use this zip section on the front here. I've got my head torch um, and whistle in there, and then I'm going to put my uh, tissue. Hand sanitizer in that bag, and a rubbish bag. Pop those in the front, and then hopefully it'll be sunny, so I'll be wearing my sunglasses. And if it isn't, then I just throw those into the main section of the rucksack. So nice and light, nice and compact, with the weight quite low down to the bottom, and it's nice and padded on the back. <laughs> 